Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to look at Naoki Urasawa's, um, I guess, adaptation of uh, Osamu Tezuka's Pluto. I, I don't know the whole um, sort of how, how, um, how the two creators um, did this. Uh, it looks like, from what I what I gathered, was Osamu uh, Tezuka created this idea, but then Naoki Urasawa um, actually wrote and drew the story, and so it was recommended. Um, I've never seen this stuff before. I really don't know anything about it, um, other than the fact that visually it's actually very, very cool, and um, I've got maybe like 20 or so pages open. It, I really enjoy looking at things I've never seen before and exploring books and ideas and things that I haven't um, witnessed. I don't have a ton of free time to read comics, unfortunately. I I work um, crazy hours, and uh, it's just unfortunate, but it's the situation that I'm in. I can't... I, I have a friend that's a big reader. It's funny, too, and I asked him, I'm like, how much do you read a day? And he said two or three hours, and it's like, I can't even imagine having two or three hours free. I'm lucky if I have 45 minutes. Um, anyway, all right, so let's let's check this stuff out and see what we got. So this is the opening page. This is a story called Death to Robots, I believe. And um, it starts off a little cartoony, but man, he hits you over the head with some really, really crazy stuff. The one thing I noticed trying to pick a story um, for this was he rations detail really, really well. And what I mean by that is um, he'll give you some really, really detailed pages and then he kind of pulls off the gas pedal and we'll do things that are that are uh, more um, open when it's talking heads and stuff like that. So, I mean, these are pretty classic um, techniques that you'll see in manga where they take, um, I don't know if it's clip art or how they do it exactly. I've seen different tutorials on it where they'll um, sort of punch together um, pieces based on photos and filters and stuff like that. I mean, it's an effective way to do it. I, I mean, it's I'm of two minds of it. One is, is like, does a normal reader care? No. And in fact, they probably respond to the detail and just the aesthetic of the image and then the story. Um, but, you know, artists will get very particular about like, he's cheating, oh my God. I, I, you know, it's, it's really, really difficult to say. This is the advice that I give people just in general is reference is fine, but you shouldn't copy other comic book artists and put that into your work, like rip off a pose from someone and use that exact thing. That's, that's super shady past that. I think, you know, reference is normal, you know, uh, lifting and style techniques from artists that you like is told all that stuff is totally normal. I just wouldn't blatantly rip off, um, you know, a Catwoman pose from someone and slap another costume on it and call it, you know, Dark Phoenix, you know. That, that's where you can run into trouble because fans will definitely uh, spot that stuff and then they'll call you out on it. But past that, I mean, I think anything goes. I, I had someone ask me recently about like someone was using 3D models to set up their shots and lighting and stuff like that and they wanted to know what I thought about it. I said, honestly, I go, why would I care what some other artist does? <laughs> you think I'm sitting around worrying about what some other dude does? I could care less. Um... <laughs> But, you know, it's like, is it cheating? No, not really. I mean, what? so if, what, if he took photographs of himself with a lamp next to him, is that cheating? But anyway, so we've got we've got some, um, you know, like nice screen tone for the dress here. Um, really, really cute kids. Really, really nice um, characterization with them. This is a beautiful shot. It's always interesting to see how a pattern like this will um, uh, transition into other panels because the thing is, is... Any kind of um, screen tone that's a pre pre made pattern flowers or whatever, the flowers are a certain size. So if all of a sudden you have to draw this woman in a very small panel with the same thing, the flowers are going to be gigantic. You get what I'm saying? Is like, um, but it works pretty good. Like, you know, if he if he had a tighter shot, he might have to draw the pattern in, um, or, or a further away shot. Excuse me try to go in order so it's interesting i i glanced through about three or four full issues of this book this is this guy is definitely a reoccurring reoccurring character i picked this is chapter gosh it's we're way into it i guess maybe it's chapter 17 uh but i looked at chapter one a couple of the i think what's it called norse issues 
I was just trying to get a feel of it. And then I saw this one. I was like, this one's fun. It's got, like I said, it's got some really good action in it. But when he, when he does these pages, they're a little more simple. This is very, very nicely drawn. I find that this type of work is sometimes more memorable than very detailed art. For whatever reason, like looking at the book yesterday, I walked away from that video with way more memorable images than like I saw some art on eBay before I shot this video. It's all just abstract to me now, honestly, as it was so overblown with detail. And look, I'm guilty of it too. I'm always trying to find a balance between composition and that. But these are really, really nice. And then we're going to get into some action here very, very soon. You can see it was ramping up on this. And we're going to get to this in a second. So, again, same house, same shot. You know, the, the, the tricky thing, if you do do something like this, do do, is if you didn't take the photo yourself and you don't have other angles of the, the house, um, at some point you're going to be on the hook to draw it, which this is a very hard thing to draw, to be 100% honest. Um, but, you know... If you if you don't have the ability to draw out of your reference or draw beyond it, then you will have issues. So this is a really, really pretty shot. Again, no normal fan is going to bug out on this. And in fact, I mean, now you've got AI. People are doing AI comics. So it's like there's, there's all kinds of um, uh, uh, different ways that comics are going to be done now. It's just the way it is. You can fight it and you can complain about it, but it's not going to go away, my friends. It is not. All right. Beautiful, beautiful shot here. Oh, my God. It's gorgeous. Really, really cool. Would be extremely time-consuming to draw something like this, but, boy, it looks fantastic. And one thing I will say is, though, people really do appreciate artists still that's not going away if anything the more sort of computer generated art that people see the more that they will appreciate um, people that can actually draw it becomes more special because it's just going to be flooded with um, things that aren't hand drawn you know like someone that just writes and does things like that um, anyway beautiful beautiful establishing shot or whatever you want to call it this is great really really good eye so it was a good recommendation. Really fun book. And you could just, I, I can tell looking at this, man, if you were reading this story, it would just suck you in so good. Because it really gives you an opportunity to experience the story. This It's funny because I shot a video I scrapped right before this of a different book. And it was the same way. It was really, really light on dialogue. But you, I could just tell, like, that's great. Um, I could just tell looking at it that, like, that story was so good and it was so fun to look at and so memorable. So there's something to be said for minimalistic um, mumbo-jumbo. Man, that's so cool. Ooh, that's nice. All right. Oh, sorry. I I had, <laughs> I had pulled this up just because I didn't want to forget Naoki Urasawa's name because it's brand new to me uh, this morning. So uh, just out of respect for all of you that are fans, um, I didn't want to be like 100% that guy. I'm just going to be 50%. Someone looking at the work that doesn't isn't as familiar with it. This is really, really nice. Man, this is some cool shit. It's interesting, too, because I don't know um, the, the the story. So I don't... Like, like this feels dark. It feels sci-fi. I mean, the name of the book is Pluto. But this, this was really giving me almost like Half-Life 2 vibes or that kind of thing, where it's like, like a bit of a mystery, a bit, you know, just some fun stuff. Yeah, like shot to death by an officer... It's really interesting. I actually just got a bunch of books on tape for while while I finish up Blaster Kid, so I'm gonna knock out um, some Stephen King novels when I when I'm uh, drawing, which will be fun. It was funny because I'd already gotten the books, and then literally within a day or two. I happened to watch an interview with Bernie Wrightson, and he was talking about that he had read The Stand by Stephen King five times. And he was starting it again. 
<laughs> I was like, that's really a funny coincidence. And then I was watching a video um, from Roger Dean, who is a album cover artist and illustrator. And um, he was saying that he listens to a lot of books on tape when he works. And then he said that he's really into Stephen King. And I was like, wow, this is that's very trippy that that, um, you know, two people that I admire basically both were. Um, so I've got a needed eraser that melted all over a triangle. I was trying to grab it off real quick. This is a really, really pretty shot right here. It's very, very nice. You know, and it was interesting is, so, you know, going back to, because that the shot that I was complimenting was clearly a photo or a photo with drawing around it, um, just like this is. Um, I, I've, I've told this story before, but years ago, um, I was at Wildstorm one day and um, a new book had come out. It was a Michael Turner comic or a preview for a Michael Turner book. And it was when Michael had stopped using inkers and he was just going from pencils to colors. And someone showed me the book and they didn't say that. And, and they were like, like, what do you think of this? And I looked at it and I thought the art looked good. I thought the coloring looked good. And I didn't, I wasn't really looking to see if it was inked or not. And I said, yeah, I go, it's, it's really, really nice. And they go, yeah, but it's not inked. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm an inker. I'm not looking for inks. Like, that's not the priority. I'm looking for good storytelling. I'm looking for good composition. I'm looking for dynamic drawings, originality, you know, like, like, and color, you know, at the end of the day, like if a book is, if, if it's inked or not really isn't, um, a deal breaker for me and kind of the same with this stuff. If it's a great story and I'm reading it, then I mean, you know, do I care that they took a photo of a hallway and used that instead of drawing it? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think in American comics, it's a little like the expectations are different, but with so many people, like, like as soon as people started working on computers more, I knew it would happen. I, I predicted this years ago is the temptation is just too great for people not to do stuff like that. And I it was the big thing was art collectors. They didn't like blue lines. And I remember thinking, blue lines, that's the fucking tip of the iceberg. You <laughs> wait and you see what's going to go on with computers and, and comic art in the next like 10 to 12 years. Of course, I was right, but they didn't they weren't seeing it from, uh, you know, the point of view I was. They're just they're They were focused on their fandom. This is great. They've never had to draw, like, some of the stuff that we're called, like, this is so badass. Man, this is some kick-ass shit. And I've got needed eraser all over my mouse, so it's driving me crazy. <laughs> Every time I touch my mouse, my finger's sticking to it. It's a super, like, man, it's it's almost like putty, the needed eraser. It's such a weird texture. It works pretty good, though, honestly. I can't remember the brand. I think it's Stadler. But, yeah, they're, they're super soupy. If that's a word that you can use to describe a needed eraser. Look at this. This is good shit. But yeah, I, I, my experience flipping through several of these comic books was it was a very balanced comic book experience. There was, there was enough pizzazz and enough detail and enough excellent drawings that if I flip through it, there's a high likelihood that I would have bought it based on the um, oh shit moments in it. So... That's how I always decide. Like, if I go to a comic book store and I flip through 50 books, that's what what I'm initially looking for. I'm looking for a level of skill with the artist, something interesting about their work that makes it stand out a little bit. Not That's not a deal breaker. but um, And then, you know, enough, enough cool-looking pages in the book where you go, I want to check this out more. You know, I think this is a beautiful panel for just basically a guy's, you know, jacket and his hand and a little bit of, like, fire or smoke in the background it's really really cool and this is great i mean it really looks cool it's very man it's a, it's it's interesting because obviously these are digital scans so i don't know what the actual manga would look like in person but like i have the blam um uh, master editions and boy they're clear but i got i got really used to seeing blam kind of like this where it was pixely and a little more gritty and it, it was it it's like i actually ironically enough ended up i really like both versions for different reasons like this this gives a very like dark creepy super creepy mood now this super tight and clean with the same amount of value would still be gray and this would all be like this but with the grit gone um it can give it a little bit more of a sterile vibe so sometimes what you're what you get accustomed to seeing first 
um, sort of sets the tone for the story in your mind. It's real interesting, but um, robots are slaves. Robots are servants. <laughs> Oh, man, it's cool. Yeah, this is a really fun story. It's really weird. Super trippy. So thank you for the recommendation. I appreciate it. And again, I mean, there's a higher likelihood now, just at the point that I'm at, and kind of it's it's fun seeing stuff that I haven't seen, that, you know, people breaking uh, or recommending artists that I'm not familiar with, um, you know, I, I if I don't know the name, I usually will Google it right away, and I kind of just will scan Google. And I have to judge it on two things. I'm not going to lie. I definitely pick most of the stuff, 95% of it, because I like it. Um, but there is a small part that can be a deal breaker is if I know that just the video is is not going to appeal to people. Some artists are good and it's interesting, but it's a little too dull for a video. So unfortunately, those I would be more likely to be done on like Patreon not that's not a plug for patreon i'm just being honest it's like like there i'll do stuff that i wouldn't do on main youtube just because you know i can't have a video that nobody knows the artist and then the art is really really just like vanilla i mean and vanilla can be good it's apparently it's the most popular flavor of ice cream there is um let's do this i'm going to uh uh, I guess I don't have more files open. All right, I'm going to end it there. But that was really fun. And this this series really, really, um, it's all like this. There's there's a lot of meat on the bone. And it's it's quite open and, and enjoyable to read, too. So I really liked it. I appreciate the recommendation. And um, just keep recommending them. You know, I always say this to people. If, you've re if you recommended something on a past video, don't ever be shy about just recommending it again if I've not done it. I would recommend searching my channel, though. I would say that 75 to 80% of the time when someone will ask me to do a book, I have actually done it. So it, it's very, very possible that an artist or actual exact title that you want me to do is on my channel. There's enough videos now that, that um, it happens more often than you would think. So check first. But um, yeah, you know. Don't be shy to just recommend it again because it's, you know, usually I'm following up with the most recent videos to see if there's a question or something that I, that, you know, I'm going to try to address for people. So anyway, but all right, I'll talk to you guys later. I'm going to do an anatomy figure drawing video for Patreon and then I'm going to get to work. So, all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.